So yeah, thank you again so much for the invitation and really, really excited to share a little bit more about what uh, our out outreach efforts at Foldscope today. As uh, was just mentioned, my name is Paola. I am originally from Peru. I'm in Peru right now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about outreach efforts in Peru in, in a little bit. And I've been at Foldscope for four years. I actually met them when I was a grad student and yeah, I'll be sharing for some of you who are not familiar about Foldscope, I'll also be explaining what it is, what does it mean? And as I was saying, the work that we've been doing these past few years. One of our taglines is, we want every kid to carry a Foldscope in their back pockets. So I'll go more in depth in the next couple of slides about what Foldscope is, but Foldscope is a portable paper microscope. Actually, the small yellow, uh, tool that you see here, that's a Foldscope. She, this high school girl is actually preparing a sample to introduce it into her Foldscope, her portable microscope. And as you can see, it's pretty small. So you can just put it in your purse, in your backpacks, in your back pockets. And that is at the core of what Foldscope stands for, which is we want to increase science accessibility. We are a small team but everyone plays a very important role in the team. I want to highlight two people, uh, especially here. One is Manu and the other person's Jim. So Foldscope was born at Stanford University when Jim was a grad student. He was a grad student, right? Like coming up with a thesis project and he decided he wanted to develop um, a, a product in the context of frugal science, which is a development of low cost scientific tools. So Jim developed Foldscope in Manu's lab. Manu was and still is a uh, faculty at Stanford. Obviously as a faculty, he provided all the support, mentorship, everything that was needed uh, for this product to be developed. And when Jim finished grad school, he wanted to take Foldscope beyond academia, right? Uh, him and Manu um, talked about it. And that's when the company Foldscope Instruments was born. And uh, yeah, we're working in developing new products, uh, but our main one, of course, is Foldscope. So what is Foldscope? Foldscope is, as I was saying, a portable paper microscope. I get this question asked a lot when I say paper, they ask me, is it recyclable? And it is not. It's not like the paper you have in your notebooks. It's not like toilet paper. It is a different kind of paper that's synthetic, but it's not plastic. It's 100% waterproof. So you can take it to the beach, to the to rivers, to lakes, on hikes, and so on. It doesn't need electricity to work. It just needs a source of light. You can just use regular natural light from outside, or you can also use different lamps, um, uh, flashlights, and so on. It doesn't look like the traditional microscope, and it's actually really cool because I know everyone here has used the standard educational microscopes, at least once in, in your lives, uh, obviously it looks very different, but has all the parts that a standard traditional educational microscope has, like a lens, the Foldscope lens. Uh, this is the classic, the Foldscope classic. We refer to it now as Foldscope 1.0. It only has one lens that's here that has 140x magnification to micron resolution. So you can see single cell organisms, microorganisms like bacteria. It also has a stage piece. It has a focus piece. It has a piece where you can insert your samples, right? Where you can place the samples you want to look at. So it works like any other traditional educational microscope. It just looks very different. Uh, you can look through it in three different ways. The first one is just using your eye, like here, right? Just bring it close to your face, look through it. You can also couple it with your phones. And um, something really cool about doing this is that this will, using your phone's zoom, it'll allow for the magnification to be larger, right? So as I said, the lens is 140x magnification. If you, if you use your phone and you have the zoom set at 2x, the total magnification will be 280x. So, you know, it'll allow you to uh, magnify the image that's already being magnified. And the last one, uh, you can also use it as a projector. Actually, here we have a girl tracing uh, the sample she's looking at. You just need a, a very strong source of light, like a flashlight, and a dark, a dark place, right? It could be a dark room or outside when it's like late at night and so on. And then you'll be able to trace the, the image you're looking at. So here is a, a video um, about like people using Foldscope for the first time. Wow. 
might be trying to gain it from the tape. So I'm gonna lower the volume there. Um, yeah, as you were like, you know, in the images and audio you were listening to, um, it always like, I mean, I've been doing this, as I said, I've been part of the company for four years, but I actually met them when I was a first year grad student at Stanford. So that's like, that was in 2014. So that's already 10 years ago, right? And um, even like I myself, like, I don't know if all of you have used the full scope before. My assumption is some of you probably have, some of you haven't. The first time I saw a full scope, and back then it was a very early prototype, so it not, didn't even look like the images I showed. Uh, I had used microscopes before. I was just starting my PhD and I was using confocal microscopes, right? Like super resolution microscopes and so on. And I, um, I was like, these guys are playing. It's, there's no way this could work. And it actually did. Like literally my face was like those kids the first time I looked through a false cup, I was like, wait, what? Like it, I can actually see microorganisms. And that just blew my mind. And the excitement that like both kids, you know, adults, and just regardless of the age, the excitement, the first time you're looking through a microscope gives you access to a world that's there that you just weren't able to see. So that's just, that just, it's, it's honestly one of my favorite moments whenever I'm leading workshop, uh, full scope workshops and all the images that you're seeing right now are images captured using a camera or a phone through a full scope, right? So all, so all of these ones are images taken through a full scope and you can see um, how they And um, just, you know, going towards the end of the video, um, I really like this part because it zooms out, right? And it shows the huge, immense world that we are part of. And as you all know, right? Because I know all of you do microscopy. We were literally just looking at a couple of drops of water for a small, small sample. And there's a huge uh, world out there to explore. As I said, uh, I was just mainly talking about the Fullscope 101 Classic or the Fullscope 1.0 or Fullscope Classic. But a few months ago, we launched a couple more products. One of them is the Fullscope Mini that uh, works actually pretty well. It's super easy to assemble, takes you less than 30 seconds. Uh, doesn't have all the pieces and it doesn't work exactly like a traditional educational microscope. And then we have the Fullscope 2.0, which is an upgraded version of the 1.0. Uh, one of the cool features about the 2.0 is that it has interchangeable lenses. As I said, the Fullscope Classic only has the 140x magnification lens. The 2.0 has the 140x magnification lens, but it also has, you can swap that for a 50x lens or a 340x lens, right? So that's, that's a really cool thing uh, about the 2.0. We love to say that the world's largest microscopy community, we've deployed more than 2 million full scopes around the world here uh, as you know, a map that just shows a few of the places where we've distributed them in more than 164 countries. And we have a community website that's called microcosmos.fullscope.com. It is blog style, but we're planning on adding more features this upcoming year. We love this place because it's a place where full scopers, that's how we call full scope users, can gather and share their scientific observations. So here are a few of um, just different posts that people usually do on a daily basis. And they are around um, just health related stuff, education, just simple things they observe when they go on a walk or a hike. These are some examples of use cases in health education, agriculture, for example, detection of pathogens in rural areas in different parts of the world. And as I was saying, it, it, you can also just, because it's portable and it's small, you can bring it with you anywhere. There was this French guy uh, that was traveling around the world or like going somewhere um, on a trip and he, with his chicken, so that was something like really fun about it. And he decided to bring a full scope with him to just look at samples he was collecting while he was traveling. And this leads us to a very important question. All of this, right? I've been saying we have this amazing world around us to explore. There are so many beautiful things to see. 
Um, and the question that comes up is who gets the right to explore? The answer is obvious, it should be everyone. We unfortunately know that's not the case, right? All of us who do microscopy, we know how expensive things can get really quickly and how careful sometimes we need to be with some of the equipment we use, which is at the core of why Fullscope was created because our mission is to increase science accessibility and that's why this product or this tool was designed, which is, I mean, of course you won't be able to do super resolution microscopy with this one or electron microscopy, but it works like any other standard traditional educational microscope. And there are tons of people out there that have never ever, like even after high school and sometimes even college, never use a microscope. And um, that's why one of the important components within the company are our, our outreach efforts. And that's something I'm very passionate about. And I'm, I'm very glad to be leading that um, whole area within the company. And that's supported by grants, donations, and other um, different um, sources of, of income that comes that supports that work. So I'll mention a few examples of uh, different partnerships we've had with different organizations and programs we've deployed. One of them uh, is our partnership with the Indian government. It started in 2017, then went on hold for a few years because of the pandemic. But um, we were able to cultivate an amazing community of full scopers in India. And we actually have people there who are still constantly leading full scope workshops on a daily basis. They've incorporated into their curriculums at schools and so on. And here are some images of different workshops. For example, this one, this was a workshop for 600 students in a remote um, village in India. Uh, Akshata, uh, the woman that you see here, she's one of uh, the people, one of, uh, we call them our super mentors, super full scopers, because she's super active within the full scope community in India. And I always love highlighting um, the work that uh, Mo, Mr. Mo does. He is the man that you see here. He uh, is from India. He is just a great example of, he truly embodies uh, Fullscope's heart and overall just like what a human heart should be like. He is super passionate about reaching those ones from underserved places, um, mainly rural areas in India. Um, these numbers are outdated actually, they're from a year ago, but he himself has, trained more than 120,000 people, right? More than 100,000 students, more than 17,000 teachers, more than 15,000 just general public. Um, he's very active on Twitter and X, if any of you is interested in his work, um, Mo Pandurajan. Um, he is almost every day, he's always posting new images and videos of different workshops he does um, throughout India. And he now gets invited to give talks, um, some donations, support um, the job that he does. And it's just an amazing uh, thing to see, honestly. He, he's an amazing person. And, and here we also start talking about what the ripple effect is because he trains other people and then these people train others and so on, right? So <laughs> that is something that we've seen in different Foscope communities throughout the world. And we're just, yeah, we're just really happy to see that. As I was saying, I am from Peru. I'm actually, I've been in Peru this past few years. <clears throat> and this has given me the amazing opportunity to lead different full scope outreach efforts here in my home country. One of them is our partnership with Enseña Peru, which uh, translated to English would be Teach for Peru. We did a pilot program last year. Oh, and Enseña Peru is an organization that supports teachers in underserved and rural areas within Peru with um, different workshops and different training um, in different areas, right? These are for teachers, as I said. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna drink some water. And, and yeah, last year, um, we, thanks to an anonymous donation, we were able to partner with them and run a program in Cajamarca, which is uh, located in the Northern part of Peru in the mountains. And we were able to um, lead workshops in seven years. And this is in seven schools, sorry. And this is part of a larger program because it's not just the training, right? Um, it's also ensuring that people actually use it, right? And then they incorporate it into the curriculum. So um, I'm gonna show you a very short video of the work that we did there. 
Imagina poder ver un mundo invisible a simple vista. Imagina poder ver insectos pequeños, células vegetales, microorganismos y más sin un microscopio tradicional. Pues esto es posible con los Foldscopes. Los Foldscopes son unos microscopios de papel portátiles que no necesitan electricidad y a bajo costo. Que hace que la exploración microscópica sea más accesible para personas de todas las edades y ubicaciones. Gracias a una donación anónima, Foldscope Instrument y Enseña Perú se unieron para llevar a diferentes instituciones educativas de Cajamarca, ciudad norandina del Perú, un microscopio innovador, el cual permite que cada estudiante pueda explorar y visualizar pequeñas muestras con gran precisión. Con el objetivo de incrementar la accesibilidad de la ciencia por medio de los microscopios de papel, se capacitaron 28 docentes de 7 instituciones educativas para que ellos puedan transmitir este conocimiento a sus estudiantes, beneficiando así 735 alumnas y alumnos. En dos instituciones, además de capacitar a los docentes, pudimos también capacitar a estudiantes, quienes pudieron vivir una experiencia única al armar sus propios microscopios, colectar y armar sus pequeñas muestras y visualizar. Algo que vemos todos los días se convirtió en un gran descubrimiento al lente del Forza. And something uh, that's mentioned in this video that's really important is that component of assembling your own microscope. Because how Foldscope was designed, actually, I didn't mention this, but the name comes from folding and microscope. Uh, it was inspired in origami, right? That uh, Japanese technique to just fold paper and create different shapes. And it is truly like a game for kids. Of course, you have to guide them on how to assemble it. And while they're assembling their own full scope or they're playing, right, folding paper, they are also learning about different parts of a microscope, right? They're learning about a the lens, they're learning exactly what the, the function of a focus piece is and so on and so on. So it, it just goes beyond them just following instructions, but actually acquiring knowledge as they're going through that process. And as I said, this program is, is uh, amazing because what I showed in the video is the first part, which is in-person training to the teachers and some students in some cases. And then the next phase was the teachers actually training the students. And that's why this partnership with Enseña Peru was really important because uh, with them, we were able to offer support to the teachers um, throughout this process. And then the final part, which is the goal, and this uh, pilot was done uh, by the end of last year, which is the end of the school year in Peru. It actually just started again this week. Um, and now the third phase that we're entering is just making sure these full scopes are successfully incorporated in, into the curriculum and also how can they be used to develop research projects that will help the community. And we're also gearing up to um, do these at a larger scale. As I said, this was uh, in one region in seven schools, uh, you know, for, for um, 28 teachers. And we're going to be doing this times four this year. Actually, we're going to be starting that next month where we will be visiting for different regions in Peru. And then another partnership that we've created in this past few months that I've been here in Peru is our partnership with Innova Lab, a Peruvian research lab in Peru that does research in new technologies that um, are related to help us uh, understand and track climate change and public health uh, overall, like everywhere. Their main work, as I said, is here in Peru. So um, they are great. They have uh, lots of different projects going on. Last year, uh, no, earlier this year, yeah, early at the beginning of January, Manu was able to come to Peru. And with the help of Innova Lab, we were able to host a workshop in one of the Peruvian universities. And here is the the intro part, and then we had a hands-on experience, and here are some of their lab members. With them, um, as I said, they have a lot of different projects going on throughout Peru. One of them is a project um, they have related to public health in Iquitos, which is a city located in the northern part of the Peruvian Amazon. I actually, this was two weeks ago, I, I joined one of their trips, and in this case, this was geared more towards us, as, I mean, obviously, like the main topic of uh, today's webinar outreach efforts. Um, so we visited the Yanchama community, which is a community in, in that city. We were gonna meet, uh, we we're gonna visit another community, but it's been raining quite a bit this past few weeks. So, you know, some roads have, uh, were flooded and so on. So it was gonna be really difficult to reach the other one. Um, but the importance of visiting this community on the first day was to meet with their leader. And that's also something uh, that I wanna highlight in outreach efforts, um, the importance of, 
just respecting cultural norms, right? In this case, it's important to meet with a leader, to greet him, to show him first what full scope is, to discuss different ideas and how, you know, applications he can have. And in a way, I mean, I get a blessing, it's not the right term, but just get um, his approval, right? That um, this is something he's interested in, in supporting, uh, a project he's interested in supporting, uh, which he had already expressed that, but you know, he had never seen a full scope before. And on the second day, uh, we had a training with teachers from this community, from um, another community that we weren't able to visit, and also uh, for pu public health employees. And this is a picture of some of the attendees where they were able to assemble their full scopes, learn to use them, prepare samples and so on. And here are a few of their blog posts on our website, microcosmos.fullscope.com. Something really cool that I had never seen before was looking at the inside of a mosquito larvae. Um, this season, as I said, there are tons of rain in, in different parts of Peru. And unfortunately, that's the perfect recipe for a dengue outbreak, which sadly happens every year. So, or it's been happening every year in this past few years uh, here in Peru. So um, one of them brought a vial with mosquito larvae and we were able, they were able to mount our sample, prepare it. And yeah, we were able to see uh, things inside moving. So that was, that was pretty awesome. And just to wrap up my presentation, just going back to that question I made a few slides ago. Um, I wear glasses actually right now, I'm not wearing them, but without my glasses, I can still see, I'm a bit blurry, but I can still see everyone. Without a microscope, it's impossible to see microorganisms. It doesn't matter how much you try to focus your, your gaze and everything, it'll just be really hard. So um, that's just, you know, everyone who is super passionate about microscopy, uh, that's why probably, you know, you're part of this amazing focal plane community. I would encourage you to just look into the work that we do at, whole, at Full Scope and all their outreach opportunities. I know up next we're going to be hearing more about outreach efforts uh, from uh, another amazing speaker. So, yeah, just, you know, make sure you always have in the back of your mind, how can you share those things you're passionate about? Uh, use the privileges and knowledge you've acquired these past few years to share it with others who may enjoy it as well, but may not have the tools to even think about those things. In this case, uh, microorganisms, microbiology, and the amazing word that microscopy uh, makes you part of, right? Giving you access to the microcosmos. Um, if you have any other questions, I don't know if we still have some time for a few questions. And if not, you can always email me at paola.fullscope.com or partnerships at fullscope.com. P-A-O-L-A at fullscope.com. Um, you can also find more information about us on our website, uh, fullscope.com. And as I said, our community website, microcosmos.fullscope.com. And our social media handles are there as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Paula. Yeah, we have some time for questions uh, still, if uh, anyone wants to post them in the chat box. Okay, we have some. Uh, okay, so we have one. Uh, from Rafael Garcia Mata, who says, I'm from Argentina, but work in the US. Would it be possible to organize something like that in my country? Yes, definitely. We actually, um, I didn't mention this, but we've had, we have some active full scopers in Argentina. I believe it's in um, San Luis de Potosí. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's actually a university there that's incorporated full scope in, or I, I think they've incorporated full scope in some courses and or constantly lead full scope workshops. Um, but yes, please send me an email. I'm more than happy to um, discuss this more with you, share you existing um, outreach efforts there and or discuss uh, possible new ones. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I, I also have a question. I was wondering, do you have a kind of age recommendation for using the fold scope? Obviously you're using it with children, but is there kind of a lower limited, limit to that, would you say? Yes, I would say probably six years, seven years or older. And this is just mainly uh, more because of um, when they're younger and I have like led workshops where there were a few four year olds. Um, they just, you know, it, it's harder for them to stay focused on one thing. Um, of course, this is generalizing. And the other thing is that they're you know, their fingers sometimes like for fine movements, like moving around the sample and focus and stuff. And um, they still have some um trouble doing that so it could be a bit challenging it's absolutely fine if there's an adult with them like four-year-olds can definitely do that as i said uh at that workshop what i did is i paired 
a four year old with an older kid that was like 10 years old and so on and went absolutely fine. But my recommendation would be six years and older um, for them to have some sort of, um, if they just want to, you know, play with the full scopes by themselves. Oh, and one more thing. Um, actually, I would say for younger, younger kids, like four year olds and so on, the full scope mini is perfect because it's super easy to use. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, okay. And then we have a question from Nikki Paul who says, uh, these are amazing. Thank you. Um, I have a similar question. We struggle to engage older kids, for example, 16 to 18 year olds. Do you have any ideas for engaging that age group? Yes. Um, I, I mean, honestly, Foldscope is a great tool because it's super hands-on. Like whenever I lead workshops in schools, it's like a five, six minute introduction of what Foldscope is. Like probably the first few slides I showed you with that video and then immediately hands-on. Um, and then um, just uh, my recommendation would be link it to things they're interested in, right? Like whenever I, I give talks, something, an example I always use is uh, if you see someone who's, you know, a teenager interested in makeup, right? And you're like, oh, this kid is probably never going to, like, this is like, of course, a huge misconception, right? But some people are like, this kid is never going to be interested in science. And it's like, no, like, there's so much chemistry that goes behind it, right? Like, how can you use that thing that they're passionate about to link it with um, STEM-related projects? In this case, using full scope, we can talk about, like, difference within, within like, makeup that maybe is cheaper, more expensive, um, you know, fake products. There's just, you know, it's just like kind of being creative of how you can link, link that. And as I said, Foldscope is something that um, is a tool, right? It's a microscope. It's an amazing tool. It's more like about the projects that you can design with that. So that would be my suggestion. Like, find out what are those things that are passionate about, even if they don't seem that related to science. And you will always be able to link it back somehow to it, right? And that's, for example, my example with makeup. Hope that's that's helpful. Great answer. And um, we have one more. I guess this will be a quick question. It's, uh, is it only sold in the US? From the US, no. sorry. Um, yeah, we actually, um, so you can just go to our website, fullscope.com, and, and we do international delivery as well. Uh, the cost of shipping can be pretty high for some countries. Uh, we actually just, um, we now have a new distribution center in Europe. So the shipping costs within Europe are like standard shipping. Um, it is harder for other places, for example, South America. Um, but for that, we also have, uh, if you go to our website, foldscope.com, there is a link that says dis distributors. Um, they are bas basically official resellers, right? So they purchase Foldscope from us. They take care of customs and all the paperwork that's needed. And then they resell them at a bit higher price. Um, depends on each country, but that's another way to get them. And you can also purchase them through Amazon. Um, we don't sell all our products on Amazon, but um, the Assemble Classroom Kit, for example, where you can purchase Assemble uh, Full Scope Classic um, ones, uh, you can find them on Amazon as well. So yeah, yeah, you can find them uh, anywhere. 